Welcome to SAT 2 Carry 2.0 online nursing channel. Every day we are discussing 20 important questions with rational for the upcoming nursing officer exam preparation. So like that in today's video also we are going to see the 20 important questions. So don't skip the video, watch all the 20 questions that is going to be helpful for you to crack the AIMS nursing officer exam in future. Now let's see the first question in this video this is the part 6 video before seeing the first question if you are not yet our subscriber please subscribe to our channel Sato Carry 2.0 online nursing channel also click the bell icon to get the latest notification about all our new videos now let's go to the first question the first question the drug of choice for obsessive compulsive disorder option A imipramine B benzodiazepine C floxetine D. Chlorpromazine. Which is the drug of choice for obsessive compulsive disorder? The right answer is very simple. The right answer is floxetine. Floxetine is the antidepressant drug which is sometimes given for the treatment of OCD. Now, the rational antidepressant approved by the US Food and Drug Administration FDA to treat OCD includes clomipramine for adults and children 10 years and older floxetine for adults and children 7 years and older fluvoxamine for adults and children 8 years and older so the right answer is floxetine here now the question number 2 the drug of choice for ectopic pregnancy option A indomethacine B progesterone C transmic acid option B methotrexate for ectopic pregnancy, the drug of choice. Very simple, that is methotrexate. Option D, methotrexate is the right answer. The rational, the standard medical treatment for unruptured ectopic pregnancy is methotrexate therapy. Methotrexate is an anti-neoplastic agent that inhibits cell proliferation by destroying rapidly dividing cells. It acts as a folate antagonist. So, hope you got clear with the rational of this question and answer. Now, let's see the third question. In a client with rupture ectopic pregnancy at which site women will have referred pain in this condition? Option A, shoulder tip pain. B, leg pain. C, pelvic pain. D, headache. So in case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy, the women will have pain which is referred to shoulder stiff. Option A at shoulder stiff is the right. The rational shoulder tip pain is an unusual pain felt where, where your shoulder ends and your arm begins. It's not known exactly why it occurs. But it can be a sign of an ectopic pregnancy causing some internal bleeding. So, you should get medical advice right away if you experience it. Now, let's see the fourth question. Which of the following is the most common kind of placental adherence seen in pregnant women? Which of the following is the most common kind of placental adherence seen in pregnant women? Option A. Accreta, B. Placenta Previa, C. Percreta, Option D. Increta. So, the common type of placental adherence, the right answer is Option A. Accreta. Option A. Accreta is the common kind of placental adherence. The rational placenta accreta is the most common kind of placental adherence seen in pregnant women and is characterized by slight penetration of myometrium. In placenta previa, the placenta does not embed correctly and results in what is known as low-lying placenta. It can be a marginal, partial or complete in how it covers the cervical orifice and it increases the patient's risk for painless vaginal bleeding during the pregnancy and or delivery process. Placenta percreta leads to perforation of the uterus and is the most serious and invasive of all types of accreta. Placenta increta leads to deep penetration of the 
myometrium. Now let's see the fifth question. A 40 year old woman with a high body mass index is 10 weeks pregnant. Which diagnostic tool is appropriate to suggest to her at this time? Option A biophysical profile, B aminosynthesis, option C maternal serum alpha protein, option D transvaginal ultrasound. For a woman who is 40 years old and who is at 10 weeks of pregnant, who is having high body mass index, the appropriate diagnostic test at this time is option D. Transvaginal ultrasound is the right answer. The rational an ultrasound is the method of biophysical assessment of the infant that is performed at the gestational age. Transvaginal ultrasound is especially useful for obese women whose thick abdominal layers cannot be penetrated adequately with the abdominal approach. A biophysical profile is a method of biophysical assessment of fetal well-being in the third trimester. An aminosynthesis is performed after the 14th week of pregnancy. So that is the right answer here. Now question number 6. What is an appropriate indicator for performing a contraction stress test? Option A. History of preterm labor and the intrauterine growth direction. Option B, increased fetal movements and uh, small for gestational age. Option D, adolescent pregnancy and poor prenatal care. Option D, maternal diabetes mellitus and post maturity. So, which is the appropriate indicator for performing contractions press press? The right answer, the right answer is option D, maternal diabetes mellitus and post maturity is the appropriate indicator for performing the contraction stress test. The rational decreased fetal movement is an indicator for performing a contraction stress test. The size small for gestational age is not an indicator. Although adolescent pregnancy and poor prenatal care are risk factors for fetal outcomes. They are not indicators for performing contraction stress test. Intrauterine growth retardation is an indicator. History of previous stillbirth, not preterm labor, is another indicator. So, now let's see the seventh question. The earliest identifying sign for a developing pressure sore is a localized option A edema, B coolness to touch, C loss of sensation, D change in color. So, which is the earliest identifying sign for developing a pressure sore which is localized? The right answer is option D change in color that is the earliest sign for decupitus ulcer for pressure sore. The rational when pressure over a bony prominences is not relieved the result is ischemia and a damage to underlying tissue. In the earliest stage, that is stage 1, skin remains intact but appears red. The area does not blanch when touch, skin temperature may be warmer. So this is the rational. Now move on to 8th question. A male patient with a history of type 1 diabetes is 2 days post of following cholecystectomy. He has complained of nausea and can't tolerate solid foods. The nurse finds the patient confused and shaky. Which of the following most likely explains the patient's symptoms? Option A. Hyperglycemia. B. Diabetic ketoacidosis. Option C. Hypoglycemia. Option D. Respiratory acidosis. So the client with the type 1 diabetes on the post-operative second day after cholecystectomy who is having nausea and who cannot tolerate solid fluids. So he is also having confusion and shaky movements. So the ex symptoms which is explaining the nurse is option C hypoglycemia. So during hypoglycemia episodes 
the patients go for confusion stage and body is in shaky. Now the rational, a post-operative diabetic patient who is unable to eat is likely to be suffering from hypoglycemia. The raised blood glucose, blood glucose level goes less than 70 mg per deciliter. Symptoms include confusion, anxiety, sweating, chills, tachycardia, nausea and dizziness. Respiratory acidosis will be uh, related to the chronic conditions such as asthma and COPD and other neuromuscular disorder. Whereas hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis does not cause confusion and shakiness. Now, the ninth question the healthcare provider is planning for four patients. Which patient is most in need of intervention aimed at preventing anemia? Option A patient who is a vegetarian. Option B patient with renal failure and hemodialysis. C patient who has NPO for last three days and uh, option D is patient in a Jackson prot drain. So for the patient who needs the priority care by the nurse will be option option B that is patient with renal failure or hemodialysis is the right answer. Now move on to question number 9. Because of decreased production of erythropoietin, renal failure causes fewer red blood cells to be produced by the bone marrow. Also, hemodialysis can cause hemolysis. So, this patient is at high risk for anemia. While a true vegan diet may increase the risk for anemia, most vegetarian diets include proper nutrients to prevent anemia. Unless a post-operative patient with Jackson prod drain shows signs of acute hemorrhage, anemia is not going to occur. Now, move on to 10th question. A patient is brought to the emergency department by a friend. The patient is unresponsive and respirations are slow and shallow. Which of the following is the priority intervention? Option A. Check the patient's blood glucose level. Option B, administer 100% of oxygen per rebreather mask. Option C, ask the friend if they were using illicit drugs. Option D, administer naloxone as per protocol. So when the client is brought to emergency department who is unresponsive and the respirations are slow and shallow, the priority intervention very simple to administer 100% oxygen per rebreather mask. So the rational, because the patient is showing signs of impaired respiration, the priority intervention is to administer oxygen and support respiration. Use the ABC's airway breathing circulation to determine the priority action. Asking more about the patient's history can then be done. Is the patient diabetic where drugs involved? Does the patient have respiratory condition? Information will be helping in determining the emergency treatment and directing the patient's continuing care. Naloxone is used to treat narcotic overdose. Symptoms of overdose include extreme drowsiness, bradypenia and loss of consciousness. Now the 11th question. When a client is hospitalized with a deep vein thrombosis DVT, which of the following nursing intervention is appropriate? Option A, elevate the affected leg above the heart. Option B, apply cold compress to the affected leg. Option C, ambulate slowly every 8 hours to 10 minutes. Option D, do range of motion exercise for both legs. When the client who is hospitalized with DVT, the following appropriate nursing intervention would be option A, elevate the affected leg above the heart. The rational treatment for a DVT involves bed rest to avoid dislodging the clot. 
applying a warm heat to reduce leg swelling and elevating the affected leg or both legs other nursing interventions include application of thigh high TD hose range of motion for the unaffected leg vital signs of 4 to 6 hours checking administering heparin as order monitoring for complications of pulmonary embolism such as shortness of breath chest pain apprehension cough hemoptysis tachypnea crackles tachycardia diaphoresis and fever can be done but the primary intervention when you elevate the leg so what is going to happen so the swelling is prevented when you elevate the leg now the 12th question the healthcare provider is preparing a patient on the medical surgical unit for thoracentesis which of the following is the most appropriate position for the patient during the procedure option a sitting up learn leaning over a bedside table and feel supporter and the feet supporter on the ground or stool option b the head of the bed is flat with the patient lying on the unaffected side the c option is prone with both arms extended above the head option d the head of the bed is elevated 45 degree with the patient lying on the affected side so the right action for the thoracentesis the patient should be in the option a that is the sitting up leaning over a bedside table and the feet should be supported on the ground or stool so this is the right position which is appropriate for a client who is going to have thoracentesis now the rational a thoracentesis is performed to remove fluid or air from or around the lungs perform a biopsy or administer medication in the into the pleural space the patient should be sitting up leaning over a bedside table with the arms rested feel supported on the ground or stool so the needle can be inserted appropriately the point of entry is from the back of the patient now move on to 13th question a patient has undergone an amniocentesis for evaluation of fetal well-being which intervention would be included in the nurse plan of care after the procedure select all those subjects so when the client who go who undergone amniocentesis when you evaluate for fetal well-being what are the intervention you need to do so select all those apply the right answers or option B. Observe the patient for possible uterine contraction. Option D. Administer RHO gamma globin to the patient if she is RH negative. So this is the two answers you need to select according to the question. Now the rational ultrasound is used prior to the procedure as a visualization aid to assist with insertion of trans abdominal needle there is no need to assess the urine for bleeding as this is not considered to be a typical presentation of complication so hope you understood the rational now 14th question which characteristic of a breast lump is most likely to indicate the possibility of cancer option a round b soft c painful D immobile. So the pos the best characteristic which indicating the cancer of breast is option D immobile. Option D immobile lump. If it is present, we can suspect for breast cancer. According to the breastcancer.org, lumps are not mostly sorry, lumps are most likely to be cancerous. If they do not cause pain or hard, unevenly shaped and immobile, most malignant tumors first appears as single hard lumps or thickenings, commonly developing from the mammary glands. Uh, that's about 50% of malignant lumps generally 
appear in the upper outer quadrant of the breast extending into the armpit back tissue is thicker than elsewhere over 80 percentage of the biopsy breast lumps are benign now the 15th question the nurse is teaching a cap for the newborn to a childbirth preparation class and describes the need for administering antibiotic ointment into the eyes of the newborn and expectant father asks what type of disease causes infections in babies that can be prevented by using the ointment which response by the nurse is accurate option a trichomonas b herpes c gonorrhea d syphilis so in this case when teaching uh, for childbirth preparation class when the parent is asking what type of disease is expected why this ointment is given to prevent for which disease the right answer would be the nurse says gonorrhea is the condition to prevent that we are administering eye ointment the rational uh, erythromycin ointment is instilled into the lower conjunctiva of each eye within two hours after birth to prevent ophthalmia neonatrum an infection caused by gonorrhea option c an inclusion conjunctivitis an infection caused by chlamydia the infant may be exposed to these bacteria when passing through the birth canal now let's see the 16th question for a patient who is in the late stages of chronic bronchitis which of the following would indicate the patient has developed a core pulmonary option a hypocapnia b venous stasis ulcer option c hepatomegaly option d night sweats so for the patient uh, who is in the late stages of bronco bronchitis so which symptom indicating that he developed core pulmonary the simple answer option c hepatomegaly option c hepatomegaly is the right answer the rational core pulmonary or right sided heart failure is the result of a lung condition such as chronic bronchitis or COPD the diseased lung deliver less oxygen to the right ventricle putting a strain on the heart from pulmonary hypertension over time the right ventricle fails causing increased venous pressure and liver enlargement that is hepatomegaly common early symptoms include fatigue tachypnea shortness of breath on exertion and cough the 17th question a five-year-old girl Hannah is recently diagnosed with Kawasaki disease apart from the identified symptoms of the disease she may also likely develop which of the following option a sepsis b meningitis c mitral wall disease option d aneurysm formation so in Kawasaki disease which symptom is likely to develop from this four option option d aneurysm formation is the right answer the rational kawasaki disease is a rare childhood illness that affects the blood vessels 20 percentage to 25 percentage of children can develop aneurysm formation if not intervened treatment depends on the degree of the disease but is often immediate treatment with iv gamma globin or aspirin corticosteroids can sometimes lessen the impending complication children who experience the disease usually need lifelong follow-up appointments to keep an eye on heart birth heart health now let's see the 18th question manu is a child diagnosed with coactation of iota while assessing him nurse rimpi would expect to find which of the following option a squatting posture b absent or diminished femoral pulses 
option C severe sinusitis at birth option D sinotic episode so for this uh, client who is having coagulation of aorta the nurse expect the following symptom the right answer is option B that is absent of diminished uh, femoral pulses that is the common diagnostic feature for coagulation of aorta the rational absent or diminished femoral pulses is a classic characteristic of coagulation of aorta severe sinusitis at birth is seen in such defects as transposition of the great vessels option so in that uh, in this episodes the squatting are characteristics that is when the patient having the problems as mentioned in option a and d that is a characteristic feature of tetralogy of phalanx now let's see the 19th question which of the following would nurse purvika supposed to regard as a cardinal manifestation or symptoms of digoxin toxicity to his patient uh, patient clay who is diagnosed with heart failure option a headache b respiratory distress c extreme bradycardia d constipation so the nurse should see the cardinal manifestation for digoxin toxicity who is diagnosed with heart failure the right answer will be option c extreme bradycardia is noticed in the digoxin toxicity when a client is diagnosed with heart failure the rational very simple extreme bradycardia is a cardinal sign of digoxin toxicity so in digoxin toxicity which you need to remember bradycardia extreme bradycardia option a b d so the option a b d like headache respiratory distress constipation so these are not related to digoxin toxicity now move on to the 20th question the nurse is educating the client with chronic kidney disease about the need to restrict potassium in their diet which of the following statements by the client indicates the this need for further instruction option a i will cook with onions instead of tomatoes option b i will have an apple instead of a banana option c i can eat peanuts instead of popcorn option d i will choose sherbet instead of cream so the following statement told by the client who is having chronic kidney disease uh, regarding the restriction of potassium in the diet which indicate further education is needed so which statement is that option c i will eat peanuts instead of popcorn so this is wrong statement related to the potassium diet restriction in the chronic kidney disease the rational in chronic kidney disease the kidneys are unable to filter potassium leading to hyperkalemia stage 5 chronic kidney disease is also called in end stage renal disease which requires dialysis between dialysis treatment clients must carefully monitor potassium intake they should avoid dairy products nuts and seeds salt substitutes fruits and vegetables that are naturally high in potassium and chocolate legumes that are high in potassium includes peanuts soya beans lentils kidney beans pinto beans and lima beans and salted popcorn is allowed so this is the exact rational why Uh, the patient should not eat potassium when he is having the chronic kidney disease now we have covered 20 questions in this video so far in the last 5 days we have covered 100 questions if you have not seen the previous 80 questions the video links you can search from the playlist and you can watch it and uh, here is the part 7 is coming soon tomorrow which will have another 20 questions
so there will be every sunday 100 questions online test will be there in our channel for that you need to request for test which is free test series to the whatsapp number which is mentioned here only those who are requesting for free test series will be added in a whatsapp group and they will be given the test once you have completed the test we will issue the certificate and you can check the answers with the rational so that is the speciality of start to carry 2.0 online nursing channel thanks for watching this video if you are, have not uh, subscribed please subscribe now and uh, if you like these two videos if you have not seen you can watch the two videos which is displayed here thanks for watching again meet you again with another 20 important questions in the part 7 video for the aims nursing officer exam 2020 still that take care bye bye stay safe stay alert